Well, there you go, my friends. A ginormous netherwart farm. And you might be thinking, what's all this about? What's all this crazy building? If you didn't watch the whole of the last episode, well, I set out my plans for our mega project for this part of the season. We're going to brew an insane, insane amount of potions. And so we found a netherwart farm designed by Impulse SV. We modified it and unfortunately I didn't get to actually build it at the end of the last episode. So we kicked this one off with a time lapse and hey, now we've got ourselves a crazy netherwart farm. So my friends, the farm works and here you can see it in action. I am AFK with a clicker running on my main account. It is breaking the warts when they are fully grown and it is replanting them as well because there are warts in my offhand. And I love watching this little character guy here fly down, breaking all the warts, replanting them as well. And then of course they get automatically picked up from down below. So now you can see there's a hopper minecart going down the row that just we just went down. So when it goes over you can see the activator rail then sends off the next minecart. It's just absolutely fantastic. And there's actually something that I didn't do, which was to put a pickup system underneath this line. That was originally the plan and I forgot about it. I think it's actually a good thing because I'll come back around here and pick that up in just a moment. And it helps to replenish the nether warts in my offhand. So I can't help but feel that's actually a good thing. There you go, you literally just saw me pick one up. Well, this is just my life now. As you can see, I just sit in the minecart, continuously planting and harvesting and we get the fortune effect from the axe which by the way doesn't seem to take any durability at all which is yeah possibly a bug but there you go this is how we're going to get an extraordinary amount of nether warts for our mega brewery project and it is going to be a crazy big project i cannot wait to get into some of the details of what we're doing with the brewing i'm hoping we'll get around to it this episode I've got a lot on the plate though. For example, I spent a lot of time over here finalizing things. As you can see, this now has like a, a safety wall around it to make sure nothing spawns and wanders in. It also took me quite a bit of time to get this farm up and running and I've learned a few things as we've gone along here. I talked about the nether warts landing on the tracks and picking them up. I actually realized the way we keep replenishing our nether warts is from the ones on the opposite side. So if we harvest all of these coming down in this direction, some of the nether warts will be on the soul soil. And it's when I go down in this direction that I'm actually picking them up through the iron trapdoors. And guess what? We kind of compete with the hopper minecart that goes underneath in that direction. And during me trying to figure things out, I was slowing down the minecart coming through here. So you'll see that there are some powered rails now missing every other block and I think I'm going to swap them back to make sure that we come through here super fast and pick up all of the nether warts. But despite my fears and initial problems getting this thing running, I've actually been AFK over here for like a couple of hours and not run out of nether warts on my offhand. So now that the entire thing is planted and tweaked and ready to go, I think we're good for an overnight test here. And I've also added some massive storage expansion. I'm going to take note of how many nether warts are currently inside of the system. Because when we do this overnight test, I want to get a feel for how many nether warts per hour this thing is going to produce with me sitting inside of it. I've also just noticed my hunger meter. And I think that using the axe and planting the warts doesn't affect hunger. But just in case, while I do this overnight session, I'm going to put all of the armor... And valuables inside of here and so now I filled up my inventory with other items we are all good to go the results are in and after nine hours of testing this thing produced 74 stacks of nether warts there is currently more than that because I've had more afk time anyway this only appears to be about eight and a bit stacks per hour and I don't know what I was expecting but I do feel like that's a little bit underwhelming and so I suspected that maybe the fortune enchantment no longer worked on axes since they added it to hoes. And hoe is kind of like the new default tool for certain things. Anyway, a very simple experiment that requires fully grown nether warts. If I break this with a ridiculously high enchantment, we can see that it is applied. We got 44 that time. Let's try it with the hoe as well once it's fully grown. And that was a heck of a lot more. Well, this is rather peculiar. When I do this with Fortune 3, it seems like they get roughly the same amount of nether warts. When I do it with a ridiculously high enchantment, the hoe clearly gets a lot more. 
And this is made rather simple for myself because I do actually have a hoe with Fortune 3 on, so we can just simply swap to that and hope that in the long run we'll get a few more nether warts overall. Oh, and one other thing, I came back to my computer after 9 hours AFK with two and a half haunches of hunger gone down, so if I'm going in for a longer session than that I'll need to come back to the computer and make sure that I eat some food. We could also counteract that with a beacon, if we had a permanent regeneration one here, then running out of hunger and taking damage would never really be an issue because we would replenish our health. So this farm is basically finished, I'll probably tidy up this room a little bit in a live stream maybe, but there was one modification of redstone that I needed here, and that was to detect when the minecart is empty, because when I jump out of this thing, the minecart is just going to continuously go around. So with a little bit of string here, we're able to detect the player coming through and time the powering of that powered rail so that I can continue on my way. But if the minecart is empty, then it won't set off the string, and then that means it's going to sit on that powered rail. And then, you know, when I'll come back here to use the thing again, I can just hop in here and get going. So with that project done and dusted for now, we can turn our attention to having a little bit of fun and games. Yes, Halloween may have passed at the time you're watching this video, but I really want to play Stress Monsters Halloween game, and it is now open for Hermits to come and play. And before we do, just a couple of things I want to mention, okay? In the last video, I said that I published my episodes on Monday and Tuesdays, right? Sod's Law and Mojang decide they're going to release something on Monday, so this episode is coming out on a Tuesday. And you'll hear me say this a lot, I will be live streaming on Twitch about an hour after the episode goes up. So if you're watching it nice and early, I'll be over there streaming for two hours. And apparently we got to go to the hyperlink in the nether. And this, my friends, definitely looks and feels like a hyperlink. I love the fog effect. Oh, it's a different colour now. And it actually links up to this amazing place. But where do I go now? <laughs> Aha, we got to turn left for the Haunted Mansion. And this is a really nice spot. I like the use of the mounting in the background. That really complements this gorgeous build. Oh, I cannot wait to go inside. This is like its whole own game. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, look at that sheep hanging out over there with those glasses. <laughs> this game is called Stressed Out, and the idea is that we can go into this mansion, explore it, and avoid the traps while searching for trinkets. And we've got to collect all of these trinkets, and then bring them back to our grave. But once we put them inside of our grave, we are then done. So I can effectively die and go back in and try and do the same run once again. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. I'm sure you've seen some of the other hermits play this and I'm sure I'm going to get some things horribly wrong. But as we go around into these rooms, the things I need to look for are barrels. That's where we're supposed to find trinkets. Looks like there's a lot of reading to do in here. Ah, look at this. They're all themed as well and they're worth different points for each of the different trinket types. Ah, okay. So I brought my own food, but I'm supposed to use pumpkin pie and I can have four pieces. Ha, huh, so these are the instructions. You get to pick a class as well. Since the archer could run out of arrows, I think I really like the sound of the warrior, but the tank will also have the leather pants, right, for protection. So I think this is what we're going to go with. That means we got a weapon in the form of a hoe, and now we can start exploring the haunted mansion. I am going to head up here first of all. What's behind the cobwebs? Is that a barrel? Uh-huh, look at that. Sneaky little barrel. We got some... What's this? Congulated... Co coagulated blood. I don't even know how to say that. Coagulated blood. I believe that's the correct pronunciation. Uh-huh, another barrel up here at the top of the stairs. Magic crystal. Don't mind if I do. Hey, look, I found a Hypno. Let let's just follow Hypno. If Hypno goes into a trap, then I can avoid it. <laughs> he spotted me. Oh, good strategy. So whenever we see a painting, we want to jump into it. There could also be a trap, you know. What have we got over here? Wait, that didn't activate it. Ah! Oh. And there was a barrel there. There was so a barrel there. Okay, this is the deal. Then quickly... Hey, gruesome goo. This place is massive, and I just kind of went through a one-way door without really thinking about it. So this place is kind of like a maze as well. What's behind the iron door? You know, a barrel. But how do I how do I unlock it? Oh, what did I say? It could be a trap. 
Oh my goodness me, so I thought I'd jump through this painting, and what would you know? And another one. Bird poop. We got us some bird poop. Oh, this one though. That's just death, isn't it? Can I right click? Oh, I am clever. Brain matter. That is now mine. Okay, so when I press this button, I can hear an iron trap door opening and closing. So this was the one way iron door. We're going to run around like this. Oh, awesome. Spider silk. And you know, you might, you might miss it as you go by. Prickly cube. Not me, I've spotted the barrel. And there's a barrel in there, and there's doors. You've got to think about redstone, you know. How would redstone get to this bit? There might be room under the floor for wiring, so need to look for a button nearby, maybe. Oh my goodness me, I heard a puff of fish, and then I didn't die. <laughs> I think I was very, very lucky then. Wow. I think it should probably be a rule of thumb. When you hear a puff of fish, you kind of like backtrack immediately and hope that the trap isn't behind you hey we've got a barrel over here blood caps i will take those we've got nine so far nine artifacts and this one has a button on it i reckon pressing the button is the trap <gasps> no, no 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 so not cool but i can punch out the fire what is my fate now is this it is this death for x <laughs> i mean i might not die I, uh, I probably shouldn't have punched out the fire. I, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to die here, so I will do that honorably. Okay, I burned to death. So now we get to do that all over again. <laughs> I think I'm going to go down and work my way from the bottom up this time. And if we have a good run down here, I'll know where to pick things up up top. Oh look, Hypno's discovering a secret. Let's go check it out. <laughs> He's showing us the way. I don't want to push him in though. There might be lava the other side. Okay, there we go. Brittle bone. Look at that. Look at that sneaky face. He's like a dark elf or something. <laughs> or a gremlin. I don't know. Uh-huh. Lava behind that one. Oh, lava behind this one. And here we have a button. Okay, I don't know what that does. But I'm going to make it a rule to like half stand on blocks because if a piston retracts something you could be in trouble and here we've got a whole secret area two of two see this one's one of two and look at the size of this room okay <laughs> i thought something was going to happen to the floor hey we are ah oh, so close so close come on come on come on come on come on yeah look at that woohoo we got ourselves poison sweet there is a button up the top here. There are two buttons here. One and two. They don't seem to do anything. <laughs> Ooh. Ha. Ah, okay. So, what's the betting that we can actually reach that from here? Hey, hey, hey. Fedora. So that's the first floor, and then there appears to be a basement area, but there is a, like, this fella, you trapped. Kind of looks like it can't walk over to here, so I'm guessing maybe we can't go any further. This button here opens something somewhere else. I don't know where. So we're going to head upstairs, and I'll pick up the congelated, co coagulated blood, but I'm probably not going to report on the ones we've already got right, as I'm just going to be picking them up again. I just found a secret doorway. Got to be quick to get in here, obviously. Uh, I hope this isn't a trap because I'm going to press a button. Oh, wait, there's two buttons. Also a view into that room. Yeah, it's a trap. Oh, I was here earlier and uh, I remembered this, but I didn't think I looked up. So we may have just found another trinket. I'm not sure if this little guy is supposed to be here or not, but the little guy has come for me. And he's getting blasted with the hoe. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, now, now I'm kind of in a death loop. <laughs> I don't want to be in a death loop. This is where we died last time. I can't remember which button I pressed, but I can do that. <laughs> I don't actually have to go in there. So that way we can keep the cookie. Also, if I want to be trap conscious, I kind of realised... Oh, that's something. Look, they're made out of a different material. But I kind of realise you can just stand on the carpets. So I don't think they're going to be destructible. So there's like one oak button. Then maybe I could dash in there and press the one at the end. That sets off the trap. But if you get out there without falling into the trap, maybe it links up to one of these. 
I really don't know. Okay, a cryptic message and two. I knew it. I knew it. However, I can also press that one. Oh, okay. Thing happened somewhere. <laughs> I heard a noise. <laughs> I think it was this actually. Yep, it was that. Okay. And this has a magic wand. This room also has buttons in it. So I'm going to stand here, open that and then try them in case there's a trap. Something opened over here. <gasps> Quick, 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 quick. Oh, and now we get another one. Nice. There's also a hole in the ceiling. So I kind of feel like that's everything on this floor, which leaves us with one more to do up top. Maybe actually there's two more floors. I kind of assumed that that next one was it. Oh, and we got some paintings to check here. So I found this one, but... I mean, that's about all I can do. I can click this. Think carefully. I, I don't know. What, I don't know what that's about. <laughs> and we were here earlier. And luckily, I can do that. And yep. Then grab our gruesome goo. There is redstone ore underneath the carpet there, so we might be heading into a secretive area now. We're going higher up, that's for sure. Oh, we made our way to the top. Oh yeah. Okay, there's a barrel right here. Well, it's a very nice view up the top here, but with that, I kind of believe that I've explored just about everywhere, I think. I don't think I missed anything in this building. So I think we did really good unlocking some secrets. Maybe not all of them, but I think I actually got lucky when that little guy came for me and killed me a couple of times because then I had this, which I believe is worth 10 points. So, you know, that might just be the cutting edge right there. And I think what I'm supposed to do is put my score into my grave. Here we go. And that is the end of the game. And that was that was simply fantastic. I hope you enjoyed that because that was so much fun to do on here. And hey, one day in the future when the world download is out, you'll be able to come here and play this beautiful game as well. So that was a wonderful distraction and the mega project is going to take up a lot of time and energy and there's still many things with it that I'm working out. So before we get deeper into how the project is going to work, I'm going to focus on doing some grindy stuff over here. For example, you might notice that there are these little stone pillars everywhere and that actually kind of goes around this big landmass right here because what I want to do is actually flatten all of that and then take some of the sand and actually expand it into the savanna so it looks like the desert biome is a little bigger than it actually is but of course this is going to involve a lot of digging and yeah a lot of grind work So phase one is complete. We have removed all of the sand and believe me when I say there's a long way to go because that is probably not even the majority of the blocks. I mean now we've got to level out all this stone and sandstone. Whew, the grind certainly is real. So I think we've done enough time lapses this episode. So how's this for a report on all the digging that I've been doing? Look, just absolutely grinding these tools down. Look at this area. We are slowly getting there and I say slowly because I've been grinding away all day at this and even when this is flattened we've got more work to do because I need to cover it all with sand. Actually maybe not all of it because part of it is going to be inside the mega structure that we'll end up building here. Either way it's off to the gold farm as we've got tools to repair. And let me tell you my friends the grind is now complete however i'll be going back to that gold farm again because i've worn down some more of my tools it has been extraordinary the amount of materials that we have collected the bulk storage area is actually pretty much filling up to the brim i've had to rearrange a few things 
to make room for extra sandstone. And I've also been telling the other hermits, I've been saying, hey, if you need any sand, any sandstone, head over to my base. Take what you need, I've got too much. One of those hermits was Corallus, who's got plans to build a suburbs in the desert over here, and he wants to use the sandstone to do that, so might give you an idea as to what kind of build theme he's going to go for there. But I love the idea of seeing this area between me, Corallus, and Mumbo just steadily getting developed. And what you're going to notice is that the great flattening has taken place and I thought the next step would be to start layering this stuff with sand but it makes more sense to do that after we've built our mega structure here as this space is going to be used for the brewery so that sort of thing is going to take place later on. Oh, and while I was in the area I couldn't help but notice that there were like parrots migrating their way into this desert space. See look there's, there's another one over there. Aha, there you are, heading down into the caves. Yep, there's also this blue one that's been following me. Oh, and it looks like I, I left some shulker boxes over here. Look, even more materials that we've gathered. And to reiterate some of the plans again, we're going to be expanding the desert out over the savannah. I might do that on a live stream, so you might see some of that in the next episode, which does remind me that I'll be streaming... After this episode goes out by by an hour, so at 4.15 GMT, I will be live on Twitch playing on Hermitcraft. And one last thing, the latest episode of the Best of series from Season 7, a kind of recap show on all that we've done so far this season, the latest one is out over on the second channel, so there'll probably be like the, the end screen card on your screen and all of that because it's the end of the episode, so uh, leave a like if you enjoyed it, go check that out. And if you're catching this video early on, I'll be live on Twitch. But that's it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.